Today we're going to take some of the tricks that we found in Engine War and put them together in a few scary ad make lists. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So in today's video we're going to look at four different ideas for Adeptus Mechanicus army lists, each trying to pursue a different theme within the army. Between the Holy Order Warlord traits, the new custom Forge Worlds, and the Forge Worlds specific canticles, I think there's really quite a lot of different ways that we can go down when we're trying to build a competitive list now. I've been quite enjoying messing around with the various combos, and there's plenty of other lists that we could look at in the future. Now these lists I think illustrate different archetypes that we could build around, although I don't think that any of them are absolutely 100% polished and couldn't be improved. So if you can see any small optimizations in any of them, then please let me know down in the comments, and we'll just try to demonstrate a few of the archetypes that might be possible within the Admech Codex. So with all that being said, let's take a look. We're going to start with an Arc Rifle Heavy list, then a Scorpius Dune Rider Rush, a Lucius Forge World with loads of Invul saves, and finally a Mars Multiple Small Unit Gunline with loads of heavy weapons. Let's jump straight into it. So first of all I thought it'd be worth trying to make a list built around the heavy arc rifle, particularly with the new Data Horde Forge World that allows arc rifles to get extra hits on any unmodified rolls to hit of 5 or 6. Now this is just an insanely powerful rule, heavy arc rifles on Cataphron breaches can already be reasonably efficient, and compared with an unmodified heavy arc rifle, this Forge World gives them a flat 66% damage increase. The other half of the Forge World trait gives them a 6 plus feel no pain type save to vehicles, which helps out with a few other units in this list. So in the core of this list we have a massive Servitor Maniple Battalion. Unsurprisingly we've got a ton of the Cataphron Breaches with the Heavy Heart Rifles, we have 3 units of 9 of them to be the core of the damage dealing part of the list, and another couple of 2 units of 3 to provide us more screening or outlying units. They're each armed with the AP-2 Damage D3 Heavy Arc Rifle, which goes up to Damage D6 against vehicles, and they also have an Arc Claw for close combat, which also gets the extra hits on 5s and 6s. We're spending 1 command point for the 3 different units of 9 to get plus 1 to their invul save, so for 30 points a model for a 3 plus save and a 5 plus invul at toughness 5, point for point they're going to be really annoying to shift for enemy firepower. Those 3 big scary units are going to be surrounding 4 characters, 3 of which are using Holy Order Warlord traits, we're buying in an extra 2 with 1 command point each. Possibly the nastiest one is the 5 plus feel no pain type aura that I've given to one of the manipulators. Basically this in combination with the invul save and the 3 plus save they already have means that pretty much no gun in the game is going to be efficient at removing these guys. For those of you who haven't played against iron hands with 5 plus invul saves and 5 plus feel no pain, you might not realise just how little the heaviest firepower in the game is going to do against these guys. The 3 plus armour keeps them safe from small arms, the 5 plus invul means that you save a reliable amount of the highest AP weapons, and the 5 plus feel no pain just adds to their base durability and also spoils the flat 3 damage weapons from being efficient against them. These guys are just insanely tough. The other two has that Holy Order Warlord trait for the Major Swan that gives them extra hits on sixes. So basically each arc rifle will now be getting three hits on every roll of six, two hits on every roll of five, and one hit on every roll of four, meaning that the Core 27 will be getting an average of 54 hits with heavy arc rifle shots per turn. And then it'll be even more with the re-roll ones to hit with the Tech Priest Dominus. The second Manipulus will be having the Artisan Holy Order Warlord trait, which can give them either a bit of extra AP at close range, or extra mortal wounds on wound rolls of sixes with those arc rifles, which will just shred vehicles. We've also included Data Losses in here, he's the 50 point Blackstone Fortress character, who can nominate a unit within 24 inches, and then all units around him will be plus one to hit. So they should be hitting on threes on normal circumstances, and we can make it even better with the stratagem from the Servitor Maniple, so they'll actually be hitting on twos. These arc rifles are just literally anti-everything firepower, they'll go through basically anything in the game, given a couple of turns free shooting. To round off the list, we've also got a couple of Castellan robots. These guys will be mainly trying to stay safe, they'll have a 6 plus feel no pain to help keep them alive, and they'll allow us to give us another unit plus one to hit via the elimination volley stratagem should we need it. They can also just chip in and provide a decent amount of heavy firepower all of their own. We've got a data smith to change their protocols. We've got three units of rangers with arc rifles and granic rifles just to fill out the second battalion and maybe provide a little bit of screening. And then Loki at the back somewhere, we've got three Scorpius disintegrators with energy cannons just to help eliminate any enemy troops that are hiding out of line of sight. I think this list will be very scary to face. You're really going to struggle to chew through those incredibly tough bodies and their arc rifles will basically kill virtually anything with enough time. They're not even all that great if you engage them in close combat either as those arc claws still certainly pack a punch and will chip away at enemy units. 
You really don't want to be playing this list with vehicles, every single arc rifle will be d6 damage, and we can also get the extra wounds as we've already mentioned. With all those extra hits on 5s and 6s, this arm is even very resistant to minus 1 to hit modifiers as well. I genuinely think this could be a nightmare for a lot of competitive lists to face. So moving on to list number 2, we have a Stygius Forge World this time, and we're using a Scorpius Dune Rider Rush. We're just using one battalion this time, which should give us some maximal command points when it gets to 9th edition. I could have certainly sacrificed a unit or two for more HQs though, if we wanted to get two. Stygies will give us minus one to hit for a decent amount of durability at range, and perhaps more importantly, the one command points to allow a unit to move before the game begins, allowing us to choose certain units to get up in the enemy's face right from the get-go. In particular, we'll be wanting to do this with the six Sindonian Dragoons that we have in the list, as that should give them a very good chance of making a first turn charge and tearing into something with those Taser Lances. Following them up the board, we have five Dune Riders. Three of them are filled with six units of Vanguard with two Plasma Calivers each, and the other two have two units of nine Fulgrite Electro Priests in them, with their absolutely devastating stave attacks on the charge with all of those mortal wounds. Riding there alongside them will be a Dominus to allow those Vanguard to reroll ones to hit with those Plasma Calivers. I guess we could have changed him for Data losses again as well, that plus one to hit would have been very useful. And we've got a Manipulus who's being our Warlord, and he's going to have the reroll charges Holy Order Warlord trait to help make those Fulgrites make the charge. Hopefully a unit of six Sterilizers will drop in next to this guy as well. He'll hopefully give them plus one to their movement with his movement buff and reroll charges, so they should have an 8-inch rerollable charge out of Deep Strike, and then hopefully pin an infantry unit in close combat with that Sterilizer stratagem. Again, sticking with that Scorpius theme, and hopefully lurking in the back, hoovering up any backfield objectives, we again have three Scorpius tanks, this time with the Ferromite cannons, who should hopefully be not quite as easily targeted, seeing as everyone will be wanting to gun down the transports rushing up the board, and they'll also have the minus one to hit. I'd certainly think about using Shroud's Arm for the first turn or so, then potentially swapping to one of the more close combat orientated Forge World canticles in later turns. Once they've delivered their cargo, the Dune Riders can just be annoying and tie up enemy units, as well as chipping away with a little bit of anti-infantry fire. Maybe think about auto-exploding in the enemy's face if they do gun them down too close to their own lines. The aim here is to try and overload the enemy with the amount of threats that we're throwing at them. I think one of my biggest concerns with the list is a decent Alpha Strike army that doesn't care too much about the minus one to hit, such as Marines with Chapter Masters, and if we do lose a few Dune Riders in turn one, they could have a lot of expensive units walking. Hopefully though, if they are going down the Dune Riders, then other threats like the Dragoons are going to be getting through. Screening could also be a bit of an issue, seeing as we're not going to be able to get these tanks around enemy units that are in the way, we're just going to literally have to go through them. Our next list idea is a Lucius Forge World trying to capitalise on their new Canticle of the Ominous Eye, the one that gives them plus one to their invul saves. This army is organised into two battalions, and again we're running some of the Servitors in the Servitor Manable Detachment. The biggest and nastiest damage dealers of the list are a huge unit of Cataphron Destroyers. We've got 12 Cataphron Destroyers, all armed with Plasma Corins and Phosphor Blasters. They'll be using the Servitor Stratagem that gives them a 5 plus invul save, and will be starting in the Lucius Canticle turn one. This will turn that into a 4 plus. We can then use the stratagem to continue to have that 4 plus invul save till turn 2. And we'll try and park this big unit of Cataphrons next to an objective, and then use the Holy Acquisitioner stratagem, which will give them plus 1 to their saves. That includes invul saves. In the rules, it does say that the Lucius Forge World Canticle of the Ominous Eye only caps out at a 4 plus invul save, but because of the way that the Holy Acquisitioner stratagem is worded, you actually get a bonus to the roll, not to the save, so you're still technically on a 4 plus save, but just with plus 1 to the roll, so you can technically get a 3 plus save from this. That means that those 12 plasma servitors are going to be getting a 3 plus invul save, and then we'll back that up with that same Holy Order Warlord trait to give them a 5 plus feel no pain on top of that. Basically, unless you're hitting these guys with absolute torrents of AP0 fire, then they're not going anywhere anytime soon. On top of that, we've got a Tet Priest Dominus to patch them up, give them reroll ones to hit with that plasma, and also he's going to be taking the Servitor Manipal Warlord trait, which you can buy him with the Field Commander stratagem, the one that allows you to turn Servitors into Cataphrons. If the big unit does start to take casualties, then we've got two units of four Servitors waiting in the wings, and we can just pile wounds back into the unit like that. We'll be looking at investing some heavy stratagem use into these guys, both the plus one to hit from the Servitor Manipal, and also the Elimination Volley that we can pair with those Castellan robots which we also have in this list. Finally, on top of that, we have Manipulases for extra range and extra movement, and one of them has the 6 plus gets extra hits Holy Order Warlord trait, so these Cataphron Servitors with Plasma should be putting out an insane amount of fire. 
Screening them, standing just in front of them, are another unit of Catafrons. This time again we have eight breaches with the Arc Claws and Arc Rifles. These guys will be aiming to have a 4 plus invul with the Servitor Strastion plus the Lucius Canticle. And again we'll be trying to keep some of them within the Manipulus range for a 5 plus feel no pain on at least some models. These guys will be mainly here to try and keep the Plasma Servitors out of combat though. And provide a little bit of counter charge threat with those Arc Claws. Again we also have Data Losses hanging around to give one of these units plus 1 to hit on a nearby enemy target. If the first set of Breach Servitors were hard to shift then these guys should be even worse having much improved invul saves. As Lucius is a forge world that can deep strike, we've also included two units of Corpus Garii Electro Priests. These guys will either be dropping in on turn 2, or 1 turn 2, and 1 turn 3, and think about using the stratagem that gives their shots an extra minus 2 AP to fry basically any infantry unit on the outskirts of the enemy army. From there, with a 4 plus invul and a 5 plus feel no pain type save, this should be pretty hard to remove. We mentioned them before, but we also have some Castellan robots hanging around near our servitors, partially just the elimination volley stratagem but partly because they already have a 5 plus invul save, and that Lucius Canticle is going to make them a 4 plus. That means that these guys should also be incredibly annoying to remove. Finally, to provide a little bit of screening for all of this, we've got two units of four Cerberus Raiders. These guys are really quite tough point for point, they have a very low points per wound cost, and in Lucius they'll have a 5 plus invul save, which will help keep them alive even better. We also have four units of Rangers, mainly just used to provide cheap objective grabbing and screening enemy units, and again they'll be a little bit tougher with the canticle. Again this list we're just looking at dealing insane amounts of firepower while keeping our units incredibly tough, and aiming to try and make virtually any AP that the enemy has pretty much useless with high invul saves at least for the first two turns. Finally I thought we'd take a look at a Mars type list where this time I've decided to go for a fairly multiple small unit approach, and this one's trying to make the most out of the mass specific canticle, the one that makes their heavy weapons plus one strength, and also not suffer the penalty for moving and firing, both of which are absolutely insanely good buffs. Basically the plus one strength is incredibly powerful on things like strength seven weapons, any auto cannons, twin Icarus auto cannons, or disintegrator rockets, will be far more efficient against toughness 7 vehicles or toughness 8 vehicles if they make that jump, and also wound things like space marines on 2s as well, which certainly helps. With that in mind, we basically tried to include as many of those relevant strength breakpoint units in this list. Our central castle is pretty much the same as it has been for a couple of the other shooting sections, except as with Mars, we're using Belisarius Core. His re-rolls in combination with the Mars trait should mean that we pretty much get the canticle that we want just by rolling every turn, so we should be able to stay in the plus one strength canticle pretty much all game unless we get unlucky. We then have a couple of manipulases for extra range and extra movement on our shooting castle, again with those Holy Order Warlord traits, one for the extra hits on sixes, and one for extra AP on a roll of a hit roll of six. And I've also thrown in data losses as normal to nominate one enemy unit within 24 inches to be plus one to hit against. For the core of our firebase, we again have three Scorpius Disintegrators with the Ferromite Cannons, which will be great against Toughness 8 vehicles at Strength 9, and those Rockets which will make the jump to Strength 8. Even their Heavy Stubbers are going to be pretty lethal, jumping from Strength 4 to Strength 5, which is another very relevant breakpoint. We then have three Onager Dune Crawlers with the Icarus Array, which with plus one strength to all of those Strength 6 and 7 guns, I think is actually far more useful than the Neutron Laser one. And doubly so when you have core to re-roll any hit rolls, meaning that you can re-roll anything that's a 3 or less. These guys will try and remain within 6 inches of all of the characters at all times. Behind them we're going to try and string out 6 Iron Striders with the Cognis Auto Cannons, which will be extra nasty on strength 8. And also we can think about using the Iron Strider Stratagem for 1 command point, the one that gives them plus 1 to wound. That means that their Auto Cannons will be slightly hilariously wounding Toughness 8 vehicles that aren't Titanic on a 3, and wounding Toughness 7 vehicles on a 2. Again, they'll also be profiting from cause re-rolls, the extra AP on 6s, and extra 6s for hits from the manipulators. These guys should provide some decent long-range shooting and basically whatever they're targeting. Also hanging about somewhere in the back, we've got 3 units of rangers with transuramic arcrobuses. These guys again will absolutely love being at strength 8, and also being able to move and fire with them, meaning that they could set up out of line of sight, and move into line of fire for no minus to hit penalty. Should she try and get in range of our castle, which might be getting a bit crowded now, or they could just do their own thing and sit on objectives on the flanks. I guess it depends on just how much we need absolutely maximal sniper fire, if the opponent has some key characters. To try and screen out our little castle, I've chosen to include 3 units of 3 Cataphron Breachers with Arc Rifles and Arc Claws. These guys are literally just here to be a reasonable amount of 3 plus save wounds in between the enemy and our main shooting castle, as well as get a little bit of benefits from the heavy weapons bonus as well, as those arc rifles going to strength 7 will certainly make them a bit scarier against vehicles. 
I could quite happily use something like Cerberus Raiders instead of these guys as well though, and use some more rangers for the troops. Finally, to fill out the points of the list, I've decided to include a Stratoraptor with a Chaff Launcher, who again could potentially be hovering in the Core Castle support range, obviously depending on exactly how much can fit, but he could also just go off and do his own thing, he's going to be far more effective at being able to move and shoot without the heavy weapons penalty, and blaze away with some Strength 10 Cognis Last Cannons and Strength 7 Heavy Phosphor Blasters. Once the enemy army gets softened up a little bit, he could certainly go hunting and jump into the enemy deployment zone to try and take out enemy units that are hiding out of line of sight. I think that this list provides some incredibly scary firepower as well, on a decent number of fairly tough, cheap vehicle platforms. Probably the biggest danger is getting locked up in close combat at the moment. I guess we'll have to see if 9th edition really fixes that for vehicles, in which case this list could be a bit of a nightmare to pin down. So I hope you've enjoyed a few of the Admech army list ideas. I know I haven't fully fleshed out every single list in terms of full strategy, or included things like relics in there. If there's any small optimizations that you think could improve them, then please let me know down in the comments, or if there's any other list archetypes that you think could be really strong with the new rules. I genuinely really like the Admech army in terms of army building at the moment, it seems like there are quite a lot of viable options. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, we'll have plenty more Admech content on the way, and plenty of other things for the various other 40k factions. If you've been enjoying the videos regularly, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page for the channel, which is what allows me to spend quite so much time making videos about model soldiers. If you would like to help support the videos and help keep them coming, then the link is in the description below. Channel Patreons also get to see some videos early, get to vote on what sort of videos come next for the channel, and there's regular prize draws each month where I post out some miniatures to some lucky winners. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the description below. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.